Good morning. I'm Steve from Rogers Gardens, and today I'd like to talk about a couple of orchids that are great, uh, great to grow for beginners. Uh, a couple of orchids that are really considered easier to grow. Um, for for so many for so long, orchids have been considered really exotic and things that were hard to grow, and uh, you know, plants that you wouldn't attempt to grow in your own home. And this was due to a lot of reasons. Uh, they were not readily available. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, you know, you, you couldn't find orchids in any florist or, or any store like you can today. Uh, you had to go to a specialist, and there are not many specialists in the country, so a lot of times you had to send away for a catalog and then look through that catalog and order, uh, order by mail. We didn't have any online back then. So uh, orchids were also very expensive at the time, and um, it, they just had this reputation of being difficult to grow. You had to really have a greenhouse to grow them. You, people wouldn't attempt to grow them in their house. But uh, nowadays, uh, you know, things have, have changed drastically. Uh, orchids are easy to find, uh, a lot of different ones. Uh, in fact, they're even easier to find than like an African violet or traditional house plant. You can find them so many places, supermarkets, box stores, uh, garden centers have a good uh, variety like our Rogers Gardens here. We have lots of different Phalaenopsis all the time, some wonderful ones. And um, there are um, they're a couple that are really easy to grow uh, for beginners. And so I'd like to talk just about a couple of these. And again, the first one is Phalaenopsis. I've done a couple of videos on Phalaenopsis in the past, but uh, we're going to be hitting on a couple of orchids that are really easy to grow for beginners. So Phalaenopsis, um, you know, for now, now they're, they're just available so many different places. They're easy to find, and the prices have really come down from what they used to be 30, 40 years ago. They've, um, uh, due to a number of reasons, a lot of these are actually grown in Taiwan. Uh, they're, they're, they're bred there, they're grown, and then they're shipped to the U.S. for growers to, to finish them off and then sell them to either um, box stores or garden centers like Rogers Gardens. And... Um, They've really, they really come down in price. I remember when I was young, gee, you could pay 30 or $40 for a blooming size orchid. Um, and even today with inflation, the, the higher prices, you can, you can buy these Phalaenopsis from anywhere between usually $10 and $30. Uh, um, one reason that they are more popular now is that also they're very long lasting and they're also easy to grow in your house. Uh, so this is a great, for, great orchid for a beginner. They adapt well to our house conditions. Uh, and you, you can't say this for all orchids. Um, depending on who's counting, there are between 25 and 30,000 different orchid species in the world. It's hard to wrap your head around that sometimes. Uh, and justifiably, there are some that are very difficult to grow in the house. Even experts don't even attempt to grow a lot of these uh, more difficult ones. But there, uh, there certainly are some, like the Phalaenopsis, that are very easy, even for beginners. Um, you also have to look at it from the standpoint that, um, you know, when you think about buying a bouquet of flowers from a florist, you know, you could pay $30, $40, even up from that. Uh, they last maybe a week, 10 days. With the orchids like Phalaenopsis, uh, another reason that they're popular and, and a good grower is that the flowers last a long time. I've had the flowers, each individual flower lasting two to three months. So you, you really get a good bang for your buck, as they say. Um, <clears throat> they're, uh, as I say, they're easy for beginners because you can grow them. Uh, I, I grow these on my windowsill at home. I have a nice face, east-facing window in my kitchen above my sink, so the Phalaenopsis really do well in that location. They're considered lower light plants, another reason that they're good for beginners who maybe live in an apartment or uh, even a house uh, that just has uh, some windows. So an east window is ideal. Uh, even a north window is fine. It gets very bright, indirect light. So uh, another reason for, a good reason for beginners, you don't need a greenhouse. They can adapt well to house conditions. They don't, um, don't really take a lot of extra care. You just keep them moist. Uh, most of them nowadays are potted in sphagnum moss. It's long fibered sphagnum moss. And this works very well. It stays moist. Um, I usually water mine in the house maybe once a week on average. It depends on the time of year. It depends on your house conditions. But they don't need to be kept wet all the time. In fact, they don't like to be kept wet. So just evenly moist. They don't need to uh, be fertilized a lot. Any house plant fertilizer, there are all kinds of fertilizers made for orchids. Um, I, I've even used things like Miracle Grow, 
but uh, there are certainly are orchid fertilizers that are uh, adapted for, for growing these. Um, I, I do mine about every fourth, fifth watering at home, so the beginner really doesn't have to worry too much about that. It, they're, uh, they're very forgiving. Um, and as I say, they do last a long time. Very often what happens is that the, 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 the modern Phalaenopsis, they bloom on these long spikes and you can see their flowers open at the base and their buds still coming. So this will continue to elongate and it'll bloom for several months. So this is another reason why they're, they're, you know, they're great for beginners. You get a lot of satisfaction, you get a long bloom period. Um, as I say, average temperatures, house temperatures are what they like. They're from the tropics, they're from Southeast Asia, the Philippines is where most of the species are native to. And so uh, they are warm growing and our, most of us tend to keep our houses on the warm side. So anywhere between 60 and 80 degrees is probably an ideal temperature for these. Um, um, what else? I don't think I have anything else about the Phalaenopsis. Let me just check my notes real quickly to make sure I haven't missed anything. Yeah, I, I think that's about it for the Phalaenopsis. So this is probably the most popular orchid uh, there is for, for growing indoors and, uh, and a great one for the beginner. Um, the other orchid, that's uh, what I would call relatively easy, and especially if you live in Southern California or, or a warmer climate, like where we are right now, are the cymbidiums. And these are a couple that I brought from home, um, just to illustrate uh, a couple of different points. Uh, these are best grown outdoors. So uh, in warmer climates, these are great. In Southern California, we get cool in the winter time, but um, we don't, um, uh, they, they they don't really uh, do well in, uh, quite as well indoors. So if you live in a, a coastal climate, uh, the West Coast, these are great outdoor orchids for the beginner. Um, uh, and these are just to illustrate two different types. This is a standard cymbidium. And this one has actually been in bloom. These, these flowers have been in bloom for over two months at this point. They're getting toward the end of their bloom cycle. But when they started out, this one was a, a dark pink color, the petals. It's sort of, uh, as the flower ages, it sort of changes almost to a white color. It's very pale pink. Um, but these I, I, I practically ignore um, outdoors. I have these in an area that gets a, a little filtered sun. They don't, um, they, they don't like um, very low light. They, they take a little more light than the Phalaenopsis do. But uh, these do very well outside. The only thing they don't like is probably direct midday sun in the summertime. So uh, they do take high light, but if they, if, you do get, uh, if they do get too much sun, the foliage will get very pale yellow. This one was getting a little bit too much last summer. So we have yellow leaves here. Um, so uh, it, it, it doesn't really hurt the orchid. And it's actually better to have the foliage on a very light green or pale yellow side. It's showing that it's getting enough light. Um, but there are miniature ones. This is a, this one, the variety is called Sarah Jean Ice Cascade, a long name, but it's, uh, it's uh, just about finished right now. This one's been open actually for about three months outdoors. I have this on my outdoor uh, area that gets a uh, you know, filtered sun. It, it's pretty bright, but it gets just a little bit of filtered sun in the, uh, in the midday. Um, does very well. I just water it probably depending on the time of year. In the summertime, I may water it two or three times a week in the wintertime. If we're not getting any rainfall, um, maybe once a week, maybe once every 10 days is fine. They don't need, um, don't, really don't need a lot of care. Um, so uh, they just really sit in their pots. Every two or three years I repot. I'm actually gonna do a video in a couple of weeks talking about repotting cymbidiums uh, and how to, how to go about doing it. It's not really not that difficult. But again, um, this is one that doesn't read, need a lot of extra care. Um, uh, little fertilizer during the summer. They put on most of their growth during the summer months, and this is when you want to give it a high nitrogen fertilizer. And there are, again, there are fertilizers um, specifically made for cymbidiums. I've even just used an all-purpose fertilizer. It doesn't seem to matter that much from what I've seen over the years. But um, this is one of the miniature ones. Uh, this is a standard size cymbidium, and this is actually a very small plant. But again, I wanted to show um, um, one that was in bloom right now. This will continue to grow. Um, they can get, these can get quite large. So a lot of times people have these on their back patios if they have an area where it gets shaded during the hot part of the day. Um, people get, you know, put them, you can put them even in larger pots eventually. 
But uh, this is a very small one. It was just it was given to me a few years ago, so it's just starting to get established right now. Um, but these are these are the old old they call back bulbs. These are these bloomed in years past, and it'll grow forward. This is this year's flower on one of these growths, and there's even a a new um, a new shoot starting here. This is the shoot that'll produce. Uh, foliage like this over the summertime, and this will produce actually next year's flower. It's hard to imagine this coming from this tiny little shoot right now, but in a year's time, this little shoot here will look like um, this front part of here with the flower and all this nice foliage. Um, and again, as I say, uh, I, I, don't, I don't pay a lot of attention to how often I water. As I say, in the summertime, I may water it two, twice a week, two or three times a week during the hot, hot spell. Um, as I say, a high nitrogen fertilizer while it's growing. In the fall, you want to switch to a fertilizer that's lower in nitrogen. This will encourage the bloom spikes. The cymbidiums always bloom starting late fall um, through the winter into early spring. Um, this is um, mid-April right now, and we're getting toward the end of the cymbidium blooming season, but there's still some that are still blooming. My first one started blooming last October. And so the nice thing about cymbidiums is that with you know just a few plants, you can have a succession of blooms. So you can have cymbidiums in bloom for possibly uh, six, seven months out of the year. Um, and uh, they're they're not too expensive. You can again find these; they're becoming a lot more readily available. I've even seen them in Home Depot, uh, sometimes Trader Joe's, Rogers Gardens. Usually has these during the winter months. We have a really good selection. Um, so they're, they're, again, they're not, not all that difficult to find anymore like they used to be. So I think that's about it. I think I've covered all the points on the orchids. So I think I'll stop here. And do we have any questions? Yes, we do. Thank you, Steve. So the first of the question says, should you miss the blooms? Okay, the, the, the question is, should you miss the blooms? No, it's not necessary to miss the blooms. Um, in fact, sometimes this can even cause problems. It can cause something called botrytis. If the flowers stay too wet, you can get, uh, you can get problems. There's really no need to miss the blooms, even indoors. They're usually, um, you, just as long as you keep the, 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 um, the medium wet or on the moist side, that's all you need to do. Fantastic, thank you, Steve. Second question says, how do you get rid of those white mealy pests? without using harsh chemicals. Uh, white, I, I think you're talking about mealy bugs. Um, yeah, sometimes a, a, lot, a lot of orchids, you can get the, these little white uh, insects, mealy, they're called mealy bugs. You'll see them on the buds or on the flowers. Um, without using any harsh chemicals, probably the easiest way to do, I'll take like a Q-tip or even a toothpick and I'll, um, and I'll um, uh, you know, dab, even dab in alcohol, even water, and just sort of get down and, and rub them off. This um, the the, um, <coughs> the the problem with mealy bugs is that they can get really down to these crevices. You can also use uh, something like takedown spray. It's it's not a harsh chemical. It's really a, a, an oil spray with a little uh, natural insecticide called pyrethrin. That'll also work. You mix it up in a spray bottle, and you can just spray it. Um, as they, in all these crevices, they usually found uh, around the flowers on the phalaenopsis. Occasionally, they'll get down in the leaves. But um, most of the time you will, I, I've had these indoors, and again, um, they can be a problem. But um, uh, I, I, I've done either with a takedown spray or sometimes with just a few, I'll just sort of pick them off and you know, swab them off. Awesome, thank you so much, Steve. And the sec third question here says, what fertilizer do you recommend? Boy, there's so, so many different fertilizers. Um, we, we, we have one, uh, as I say, I, I, I've used something like even like miracle Grow or just an all-purpose houseplant fertilizer. Seems to do the trick in most cases. There are specific ones. I, I don't have one with me here. Um, there's, one, there's one that I use. Um, I think it's made, by, it's made by Grow More. And I think we, we do sell it at Rogers Gardens. There's several different formulas. In fact, I even have one for cymbidiums growing with a high nitrogen. I think it's a 30-10-10 analysis. 30 is the nitrogen, so it's a high nitrogen fertilizer for the growth. And then an all-purpose one, um, I think it's like a 16-16-16, that'll also work. Um, I've also used, uh, there's an organic one or a fairly organic fertilizer called Seagrows All-Purpose. And again, I think that's made by Grow More. Uh, I like that one also. It has a lot of trace elements in and a lot of other, um, uh, a lot of other, uh, um, 
nutrients that are that seem to be beneficial and you can even you can probably even purchase this online i know rogers garden sells it but you can even probably find it on amazon fantastic thank you so facebook is on fire with a number of questions <laughs> i'll get to them in a second i'll just pause okay. for some comments they say thank you for having this someone says hi steve we love you <laughs> another thank you for having this so here's another question <clears throat> How can you encourage your orchids to bloom? Mine has not. Okay, um, it, it depends on what kind of orchid. Uh, it, like the Phalaenopsis, sometimes it's a drop in temperature, uh, but there can be any number of reasons. Um, if they're not getting enough light, sometimes if people have them in a dark corner, you know, they have them on their coffee table in their living room, they're just not getting enough light, that may be a reason not to bloom. If that's the case, move it to a brighter window. Uh, sometimes with our even house temperatures, uh, you know, we, we tend to keep our houses, you know, either air conditioned in the summer or heated in the winter, so we have regular temperatures. And sometimes to get the Phalaenopsis to bloom, you need a drop in night temperature, usually 10 to 15 degrees uh, for a few weeks. Um, uh, another a way to handle this is that in the fall time when our nighttime temperatures outdoors start getting cooler, put it outside for maybe three or four weeks, and sometimes that's enough to encourage it to bloom. Um, if they're not being fertilized, that can be another reason, uh, not fertilized enough if the foliage is really yellow. Sometimes the potting mix will break down, they need to be repotted, so it may just not be in good health. So again, there's a lots of reasons um, that they may not bloom, but, but, but um, usually, the, you know, for Phalaenopsis, the, the, the main reason that they're not getting quite enough light if they're indoors and, um, and, and they may not be fertilized enough. Awesome, and I assume that would be applied to reblooming as well. Some people are asking how, I, how can I get them to rebloom? So right, yeah, yeah. The re -bloom, I, 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 I grow a lot of these on my kitchen windowsill. Um, sometimes when you can illustrate here, as I say, these will keep keep blooming on the ends of the spikes, the phalaenopsis. Uh, there, there are a lot more buds coming, so these will go for a couple of months. Sometimes when you reach the end, when no more flowers are coming, even if you just cut this. Cut the flower spike off right below where the first flower is. You'll, if, if you look closely on the stems, you'll notice these nodes here. And sometimes these will actually branch and produce more flower buds. So again, it's just keeping, keeping your phalaenopsis in good enough light, keeping it watered enough, some fertilizer, and just, uh, just keeping it in good, good growing conditions. <clears throat> they typically do tend to bloom in the fall, but you can get them blooming all year long nowadays. The breeders have... Um, have um, have bred summer blooming ones with winter blooming ones so now you can get these to bloom all all year long very often they do bloom mostly in the fall and the winter time so that's when you can expect them to a lot of times to rebloom awesome thank you steve a quick question here mm -hmm. are these planted in the large containers or are they planted in containers within containers <laughs> um well, the, 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 these fell off this is actually a decorative container so these are in a, a fairly small pot this is just a you know pot you'll find in the in the in the store when you usually buy them. They're in these these uh, usually in these plastic containers. You can um, after they finish blooming, if you want, you can plant them in a more decorative container. A lot of times, I'll just leave them in these plastic containers, and again, I'll use a decorative pot at home. So it looks like it's growing in a, a nice fancy pot, and it really dresses it up. Um, the cymbidiums typically. You know, I, I just grow in large containers. I don't uh, worry about these. And then one thing I did, I, I forgot to mention is that, especially with these miniature ones, even though you're growing these outdoors, you can bring these indoors when they're blooming. It's not gonna hurt when they're blooming. It's not gonna hurt them at all to stay inside for several months. Um, I used to grow these when I lived in Pennsylvania. Uh, what I would do is I'd grow them indoors during the winter. Of course, when our temperatures get below 40 degrees, you really wanna bring them inside. And I'd grow them in the winter time. Um, you know, on a, on a really bright windowsill, and then all summer long, I put them out on a um, on a patio when we had our nice warm temperatures. And usually in the fall, they'd start spiking, and then you can bring them inside again. Um, awesome, thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. So here are two questions. They're separate, but I'm going to ask them as one. Okay. So someone's asked, "What causes the black spots on the leaves, and how can I get rid of them?" Someone else has asked, what causes white powdery substance at the base of the leaves, and how can I get rid of that? Hmm. Well, without seeing it, I, I, I'm not really sure what they are. Sometimes you'll get some fungal spotting, uh, which will produce black spots on, on leaves. Uh, none of these have it here. I can't, I can't show. Um, a, a lot of times it's just 
uh, you know, if the foliage stays uh, possibly too wet, uh, if it's too humid and not, not air circulation. So sometimes get some um, um, fungal spotting, especially if they're, if they're growing uh, in a very wet place, very humid that doesn't dry out. Uh, I'm not sure about the white powdery substance at the base, at of, the the, base of leaves. Yeah. I, 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 I'm not sure what that would be with, you know, without seeing it. So it's, it's really hard to answer that. Okay, thank you, Steve. So a couple more questions here. Someone said, I accidentally broke off a branch full of bulbs. Do I just put it in water? Um, uh, I'm sorry, they, they, they broke off. A branch full of bulbs. I assume they mean a branch full of orchids? Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, these are called pseudo bulbs. I'm not sure if it's the, if that, if she's referring to pseudo bulbs or not, if, the, if these are broken off. Sometimes if these are, if, if, if it's what, what's being referred to, these are called back bulbs and there's no leaves on them, but a lot of times you can break these off and you can actually pot these and they're, they're dormant buds here. Once these get separated, if they get broken off, um, they'll start start new growth so you want to you know cut these off and when I in a couple of weeks when I talk about repotting cymbidiums I'll talk about that it's a, it's a one way to propagate them and some uh, um, other orchids phalaenopsis don't have any bulbs or pseudo bulbs there are other orchids that do so a lot of times when you break off these back ones you can get these to regrow okay it seems as though the person clarified what they meant they uh, said a branch full of buds oh buds okay <laughs> yes. my, my branch full, that, that's a whole different thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's really boy there's really nothing to do uh sometimes if they're almost ready to bloom um like here this phalaenopsis this next bud is about ready to open so if this was broken off you can you can put this in water they very often won't uh, keep growing, but you may get one, one, maybe one more bud opening, and it'll last for several weeks. Uh, so if you've broken it off, put it in a vase and enjoy the flowers. Awesome, thank you, Steve. And then another question here: Is there a way to increase color in cymbidiums? Boy, is there a way to increase color in cymbidiums? Um, it, 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 it usually depends on what the, in, you know, what's in the background. Uh, some of them are just naturally pale. Uh, and there's really not a way to change it. Um, sometimes, a, you know, just good growth fertilizer will, will, will give, you know, the brightest intense colors. Sometimes if they're really in a, in a darker area um, and they still bloom, they may be a little bit paler. It, it could depend on temperature. I don't know of any way to actually change the intensity of the flower by manipulating any cultural conditions. Thank you. And then I'll have one last question for okay. this live. This person has asked, what causes yellow leaves? Is it too much water? Uh, what causes yellow leaves? It's, not, it's usually not too much water. Sometimes it's not enough fertilizer. Again, it can be a lot of different reasons for yellow leaves. Um, the, the phalaenopsis, if they're, if they're, if they're too bright, um, I mean, this is a good color leaf. It's a fairly dark, dark green color. Sometimes if they're given too much light, they'll really get pale, uh, almost on the yellowish side. If they're not fertilized enough for a long period of time, they'll actually lighten in color and get very yellow. Um, with, a, with the cymbidiums, you know, a lot of times it, it's light. Again, this, if they're, the more light they're growing in, the higher light, the paler the leaves will get, and they can be almost yellow and light green. That's actually a good thing with cymbidiums. Anytime you have a cymbidium with a really dark green leaf, it usually means it's not getting enough light, so you may not get as, uh, as good a bloom. Okay, thank you so much, Steve. It looks like that's all the time we have for questions. If you have any others, please leave them in the comments section once we post this live. Thank you all for watching. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching too. <laughs> all right, everyone, have a wonderful <laughs> day.